Henry, how are you? <laughs> Hi, Denise. Um, it's a pleasure having you over at uh, our house to do this project, and I hope it's uh, totally successful. And uh, we understand that, uh, you know, we're doing it under the power of our creator, you know, for the betterment of uh, uh, human life in on Earth, and uh, particularly in our geographical area here where we're at. Uh, so my name is Henry M. Vega Sr. M my, my dad's name was uh, Esteban N. Vega, and my, my mother was uh, Guadalupe, uh, Lupe Vega, Don Esteban y Doña Lupe, uh, in, back in the day. And uh, I, uh, we have been in southwestern Arizona nine generations, me and my wife and all my children are natives to Sonnens. And as a matter of fact, my wife was born about a mile and a half east of here, 80 years ago, in her own home. And uh, her, one of her older uh, sisters still lives there. And so uh, then uh, one of her brothers uh, was the owner of uh, uh, Luhan Bakery, Albert Nini Luhan, uh, at um, the American Meat Market uh, location on South 4th Avenue. And uh, so I, uh, I've been in the, uh, in the neighborhood since I came out of the Navy June 10, 1959. I was Navy Aviation. Uh, and uh, very lucky to look back now, you know, all the countries that I saw uh, on um, the West Pack and the, the 11th Naval District from uh, Hawaii all the way to Japan and all the way to the Hong Kong, the Philippines, all the small islands. And so then uh, when I came back in 59, a year and a year and a half later, uh, we built this, this home, my dad, through my dad's help, and I learned my trade from him. Uh, and so uh, we sent all our four children. My, my wife was a stay-at-home mother. And uh, we raised all our four children. And we sent all of them to a uh, uh, Catholic school. And they all graduated from Cell Point. And uh, in the mid-'70s, I was teaching at Cell Point in the early '80s. Uh, it was uh, very successful, you know, for me and my wife. It was my, my wife's choice that we send our children to Catholic school. And I'm glad we did. Uh, all our children except one uh, became teachers also, and uh, one journalism, and uh, the, their names are uh, Enrique Juan, Henry J. Vega, Monica Guadalupe, uh, Amanda Maria, and uh, Elsa Alicia. And so do you currently live in the area associated with the Arizona Superfund site? I want to believe that uh, we weren't we weren't right in it, but uh, uh, maybe just a few feet uh, northeast of the plume, according to uh, the information that has been given. You know, with the plume coming uh, northwest, traveling northwest, and the monitoring wells. But uh, uh, what I've seen, uh, I uh, but a lot of our family has been affected though by. Uh, by the, by the plume, you know, that uh, families live uh, closer. And so how and when did you first hear, read, or learn about the contamination associated with the TIA site? Going back to 1992, when I lost my sister Charlotte, uh, lived, lived about 300 feet northeast of us across the wash here, the rodeo wash. Um, we, ha we had heard about it, you know, and uh, we're busy raising the family and working and, um, uh, you know, so uh, we weren't too concerned about it until later, a few years later, you know, after losing my sister then, uh, getting aware, you know, that we're losing more people in the neighborhood from different cancers, including lupus. And uh, so when I lost my sister Charlotte, it was, uh, it was, it was pretty hard for me. Then I got more involved then. Uh, and I, then I went and got involved at uh, the Pueblo Neighborhood Center that I'm one of the original members uh, to, to build the Pueblo Neighborhood Center back in the 70s. We had our meetings, uh, the operations committee, um, uh, Abe, uh, uh, Abe Campillo, and, and uh, there were more ladies in that committee than men. And we had our meetings, like many other meetings for other community uh, events in uh, at here at C. Rosa Elementary uh, cafeteria and uh, and uh, library, so that goes 
back in the to way back in the seventies. So then I went to to uh, the Pueblo Neighborhood Center to get uh, more information from the previous members that have been involved in concern you concerned you directly with the TCE problem, and. Um, so I got a lot of information from different members that have been in different committees, you know, at the time, you know, concerning the the uh, activists, concerning, you know, the TCA problem. So besides your sister, did you have any other family members or people in your neighborhood that potentially were impacted by the contamination? You know, uh, back in the day, I couldn't keep track of uh, numbers, but now uh, I have numbers like 14 members of our family have been uh, affected by by the different cancers, and uh, and then we've lost some also, and and uh, so uh, at least 14 that I know of right now, you know, and uh, there's more. Uh, then unfortunately, they moved from another another neighborhood to the uh, on uh, Valencia and South Twelfth Avenue. Uh, my uh, nephew and his daughters, um, unfortunately, they've all come out with four or five of them with cancers, different cancers. And what are some of your most vivid memories when the community was most active in the Superfund site? Do you remember some of the activity? Maybe you weren't involved yet, or you read about it or heard about it. Well, you know, you would hear about it or read about it, and uh, uh, that um, the um, the uh, activist groups that uh, started a lawsuit, the fair lawsuit that uh, happened, I believe, in in um, in eighty five, and um, it's very sad, you know, that uh, uh, our people, that uh, more pioneers of Tucson in the Southwest. Uh, a lot of people came from uh, other places that hadn't been here that long that took advantage of uh, monies then at the time. And so when I first started uh, getting involved, you know, and uh, and uh, I had lost my sister, Charlotte, I was, I was a little hurt and a little angry then. I had uh, I experienced a lot of meetings at uh, Hughes with EPA and uh, EPA from uh, San Francisco and back east and uh, the local uh, D DEQ, uh, the Water Department, folks that went and uh, gave us information. Uh, I, it, was, uh, it was hard to, uh, to really uh, understand, you know, because a lot of it, a lot of it has been, it hasn't been lay, layman's uh, terms. When you think back of the early days of the Superfund site, uh, what signs or clues did you experience or hear about that suggested that there was an issue? <clears throat> well, by um, by the time I got involved and uh, started investigating, um, a lot of oral investigation from the from the Pueblo neighborhood uh, 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 clinic, medical clinic, which uh, uh, some of the folks that were there already, you know, they're old friends of mine, and I was glad to uh, to to be with them, and uh, I was uh, picking on the brain about uh, how the problem was coming, how they, my, my uh, interest real strongly then was, uh, I wanted to, to see how we could get together and um, address the issue to the government so they would address and really uh, look into all the medical problems that, uh, that uh, these chemicals were causing. And, uh, but you know, um, when this happens, you know, throughout the, throughout the United States, uh, the government won't give us an answer right away, so it took years. It took years before they uh, they got uh, addressed the problem, you know, that it was affecting uh, medical in our community very seriously. And uh, uh, I think that um, I I know for a fact uh, in the major cities, major towns, you know, throughout the United States, it's said that uh, the minority groups, uh, you know, are. are um, we we live in the southwest uh, part of the of the cities, and this is where these things uh, these uh, things uh, happen uh, most of the time. You know where the contaminants and chemicals are are used uh, uh, for uh, fabrication, uh, multi fabrication of different factories. And here it happened, you know, to be the to be building the arsenal at Hughes and uh, now Raytheon, uh, Bear Brown, West Cap. Uh, Bear Brown was the first one in 18, in uh, 1987 that voluntarily 
started their plan to address the cleaning of, the, of our water going down into the aquifer. And so when we were talking about the last time, you were telling me how you were raising your family and you were doing different things of that sort. But you also mentioned to me during this period that you went to school or college. I don't know if you want to share a little bit about your trajectory of what you, where you worked and what schooling you had and things of that sort. Well, you know, I look back now, Denise, you know, that uh, um, I, I, I can't believe, you know, how involved I was with uh, the, our church here, St. John's. And uh, I was involved uh, also with community affairs, community uh, uh, issues. And then uh, <clears throat> uh, also involved then with the committee to, to get the Pebble Neighborhood Center built, you know, which was, uh, you know, then name was going to be named the uh, Multipurpose Center. Uh, but uh, then Uncle Sam wrote me in 70, he says, you either use it or lose it which would be like falling under the GI Bill uh, that I could go to school. And I already had 12 years with a company that I was working with. And then this friend of mine, co-worker, and my brother was going to the UVA then that had been in Army in, in, in uh, Fairbanks, Alaska. And he kind of prompted me, you know, to, and my co-worker to, to go. Uh, Pima College had just opened, and we were having classes at the big hangars until uh, West Campus was opened. And so uh, I couldn't make up my mind like right away, but uh, I'm glad I did. So I finished, I, I depleted Pima, and then from there I, I had so much experience in building uh, and commercial uh, projects also. So then I, I had ASU or NAU, I chose to go to NAU to finish my major and very close to my master's. And when I came back from NAU, uh, I was, uh, not even finishing my, my student teaching at uh, Pueblo with Mr. Davis. And uh, when uh, Cell Point, the father was looking for me, I had a job, you know, there was a job that I, and I wanted to stay at Pueblo, you know, finish my, my, uh, my whole semester in, in, in uh, student teaching. But uh, so that job was, uh, was offered to me and I took it and uh, I stayed there uh, till 80, early 80s. Then from there I went to, uh, to uh, Santa Rita. And I have stopped throughout the whole south southwest Pueblo, Tucson High, Choya, and even um, Ochoa School. And they called me to go and stop there one time. And uh, it's been a it's been a good experience. I I uh, really liked uh, teaching, and I think that uh, I connected pretty well with the students because I had so much experience already. You know, dealing with the young men. And so how did you choose to build your house here in Southside Tucson? Like how were, it was just like your family members lived around here? <clears throat> well, you know, uh, there, was, there, was a, there were properties being sold in here and uh, east of here, you know, south of uh, the VA, National City, National City, and then this is, became National City Annex. So this is National City Annex. My dad had bought properties there at National City, and then he bought properties here too. So then one of my older brothers, Ernest, lived down here uh, about two blocks from here. He raised 10 children, and they were all workaholics and no problem with, with any illnesses. But then as time went on, they all got sick. And some of the Three of the daughters worked at uh, Bear Brown and West Cap and, uh, and also Hughes. And, uh, and they all got sick, different sicknesses from the chemicals that they were using. And can you tell me a little bit about the history? You were talking a little bit about your involvement with El Pueblo neighborhood. Um, can you just talk to me about how you started and why you started working towards that? Well, again, you know, I, I can't, <laughs> I can't believe how I made time, you know, come uh, from school or work and uh, have dinner and then run to the meetings. Uh, made a lot of meetings, you know, with the subcommittee, and uh, it was a pleasure working with Lorraine Lee. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with uh, Cecilia Campillo and Abe Campillo, and uh, I can't remember all the names now, you know, but uh, they. Um, there are people that uh, I've felt and I still feel that we're on the same level, you know. We were involved and interested in pursuing, you know, that the government would address the medical problems that were happening in our, in our, in our uh, plume area, in our, 
uh, Superfund side. And so we, we still remain friends. And uh, they, um, they gave me a lot of information, you know, uh, a previous uh, activist uh, groups that uh, were also doing uh, hard work in addressing, uh, you know, towards the same uh, goal, you know, of, uh, of um, getting the government uh, to really address and uh, pursuing the cleaning, the possible cleaning of our TCE. And so um, you mentioned that uh, you lost your sister, but do you remember the first time that you kind of were really aware about the contamination? Did you hear it from somebody or did you read it in a newspaper or anything of that sort? Yeah, newspaper and some close friends, but then uh, um, like when I first got involved, you know, with the EPA members, you know, they came in from uh, different parts of the country to our meetings. I uh, used to say uh, and, and share with them, I couldn't translate as good as I as it goes in Spanish, you know. Entre más cerca la lumbre, más, más se siente, más caliente. And so I would say, you know, the closer to the fire, you know, uh, and meaning that uh, if you lose a family member, one of your sisters, you know, one of your brothers, it's pretty close, you know, if you have any, any feelings, any passion for life. So um, that's uh, the... Uh, description that I would share at the meetings, you know, when I first, yeah, but uh, yeah, we, you know, we were, we were seeing and hearing on the news also, you know, before I lost my sister, but then when I lost my sister, then it, uh, it, uh, it hit home pretty close. And did you become active in community activities through the TCE subcommittee or the El Pueblo Neighborhood Center? What I was, I was very involved um, right there at Pueblo. Uh, with the with the subcommittee and um, other other entities, other communities that uh, that uh, were there at Pueblo, uh, you know, addressing the same problem of uh, what TCE was causing. And then we didn't know about these other items that have come out now later, which I you know I'll talk I'll talk about that uh, later, you know, in our interview. And then how about the TCE clinic? Were you ever involved at any level with the TCE clinic that was part of the of El Pueblo neighborhood? Well, you know, at one time, <clears throat> from one of the boards of uh, the you know, supervisors, I think they um, delegated me to be the chair of uh, one of the committees. And I really can't, you know, I really can't remember, you know, I, I, I didn't say, you know, I am 83 years old and uh, there's, uh, there's things that I've forgotten and maybe also the dismay, you know, that uh, we went through. So I have forgotten, but, uh, um, you know, um, a lot of folks are getting involved for uh, ego reasons. Uh, Mr. Vega has never been involved for that in any projects in our community, including the church. And do you remember how you were involved in the TC subcommittee, from which I understand was a precursor to the UCAP? Do you remember who brought you into it, um, how you heard about it? Well, I think, I think that one of the um, supervisors from the Pima County, I guess they threw my name in the, in the head there. And, uh, but then um, as, a, as a member of the committee, uh, we had a beautiful lady, may she rest in peace, uh, Lorraine Lee. She uh, was uh, a good leader in our community. And unfortunately, we lost her also from TCE, which has been another another member, you know, that we've lost due to this chemical. And how, uh, like, I don't know if you can think back of the time when you were having meetings for the TCE subcommittee. How, who were the people involved, or how was it like to attend the meetings at that time when you were involved? Um, Mr. Many Herrera was was, in, was involved. Um, were um, were uh, audience? Some of them were audience. You know, um, there were some ladies that were involved, uh, and, and on the lawsuit that I don't even want to mention their names. But uh, I can't. I can't really remember <laughs> some of the ladies. But they're uh, usually, and I would, and I would say, you know, um, 
facetiously, I would say, you know, if we had 20 kegs of beer, we would have more, me more men attend our meetings. But it was, most of the time, it was the majority w were women that were interested in the, in the, uh, in the issue that, um, that we had on hand. And do you remember how the meetings were? Were they contentious? Were they easy? What were some of the questions that were the committee? You know, by that time, by that time they got involved. I understand that previous meetings years back were more uh, were more uh, rough. You know, people were more angrier. But uh, by the time uh, uh, our meetings were more saddled, more more saddled, I believe. And can you tell me then how you began working or being part of the Unified Community Advisory Board? As um, I guess, um, again, you know, there was other names there, but my name was there, you know, that uh, I was involved. And uh, there was uh, the first director that uh, headed uh, the UCAP uh, in uh, 95. He asked me to, if I would be interested in joining the UCAP. That was in 1995. To now, how many years is that? And so I've been, I'm, I'm still a member. I've been diligently a member. I have missed some meetings. For um, for good reasons, but uh, you know, again, um, with the passion of, of uh, me to life and uh, my family and my community and my country, I was very very interested in the uh, layout of the original uh, plan and focus and 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 what the pursuit was for UCAP, the Community Advisory Board, uh, uh, that it was so we could the com community. Um, board would follow up and see the cleanup. And as years go, went by, you know, they would keep us uh, posted, you know, on, on new technology to, to do the soil and, uh, and water and the aquifer and the, and the TCE uh, cleaning, you know, from our aquifer. So that's the reason that I, I, uh, I have remained to, to see the, uh, the follow up with the cleaning. Uh, to my understanding, I, since day one, uh, the first cleaning site that took place, Hughes, uh, they had their towers there, um, four large ones, very large. Uh, and uh, then, um, of, of course, uh, like I said before, Bear Brown was the first one that started in 1987, uh, Tarp in 1995. So uh, then, so as we speak, we have seven cleaning sites as we speak seven cleaning sites. So I want to believe, you know, but I still can't believe 100%, you know. When they give us the figures, you know, so many billions per, per billion, you know, per top, per, per I, 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 but I, but I do believe that uh, now with the, uh, the water coming in also from the Colorado, that's being mixed also with our Tucson water, that uh, we are getting a, a, a better quality water. And uh, I think that a lot of the leaders, including ourselves, uh, a lot of us are, have turned into bottled water. And so then when you were a part of the TCE subcommittee, then you transitioned straight into the UCAB? Or was there anything? Yes, uh -huh. then I transitioned yeah, into, the, into the UCAP. Uh, some of the other items that I have I've left out, um, um, you know, it was so, um, so, um, negative costing, you know, that uh, people in the area, you know, back in the day that we didn't have that many uh, people with their homes with AC, air conditioning, so that we could get even get it from our cooler blowing into our home, you know, to keep our homes cooled, uh, taking a shower, drinking the water. So it wasn't only one, one way that uh, it was affecting our, our, um, our, our human being life. And so as the UCAP, were you addressing all these different issues, or what issues were you addressing? Well, in the beginning, you know, uh, we were, we were uh, pretty hard, uh, you know, addressing the issues of, uh, <clears throat> of, the, um, of the people that we were losing with different cancers in our, in our entire Southwest community. And uh, within, uh, within on the south, more on the west side, Plume headed north, our community, you know, immediately there. So, uh, yeah, we, uh, most of us that were involved were uh, really pursuing, you know, uh, we really, uh, uh, is the UCAP, uh, the, the program of cleaning, is it really gonna be effective? And they, uh, 
they were keeping us up to par, you know, with all the, I've, I've always asked, uh, well, how many um, uh, monitoring wells have we had? And uh, throughout uh, the airport, the, the TIAA, uh, many, many monitoring wells, and then, then continuously uh, to our wells on the northwest side, continuing to, uh, to uh, Ajo. And uh, a lot of us would like to believe that uh, it was further than Ajo, you know, going northwest. Amazingly enough, you know, uh, when I was involved with a committee uh, addressing uh, 23 tanks uh, at the uh, Tom Price operations, city operations, uh, there were the 23 tanks leaking gas to Mother Earth. And uh, they informed us then with the monitoring wells that the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the contamination was going northwest. So in fact, headed towards uh, Santa Cruz River. Same difference with the, the plume uh, for the TCE and one, you know, the, uh, the edit one uh, now in the later years, uh, one day accident four, which was admitted in 1993 to us. So that's, uh, uh, it was um, the product that was used in, in uh, uh, lotions and uh, toothpaste, no problem, you know. But then, you know, in the later years, you know, they're coming up more of the, the truth, I want to believe, that it was used, being used all the time along with TCE, which was, you know, doubling the, the, the negative cost for, for our health. And, uh, and then there was, there's also a, a platinum that uh, has come out. So, you know, uh, so the, our government in uh, also the, the, um, the uh, was feeding us a lot of our plants that are hurting uh, the, our atmosphere, you know, to the negative uh, from uh, fossil fuels. Uh, but the government, you know, they just lay, they lay back and just take your time in addressing the problem to, uh, to uh, really um, um, admit, you know, that these are, uh, these are things that are ha hurting our, our environment. So what is, are the most proudest, uh, what are you most proud of, of your involvement or your contribution to the Unified Community Advisory Board? Well, I, I think like uh, other members uh, that have been there a long time, uh, sorry that some of them are, we've lost some recently, uh, and uh, but the ones that have remained, I am glad, you know, that uh, our uh, co-chairs, uh, uh, you know, are, are hanging in. And uh, I'm also glad that uh, somehow uh, we've uh, motivated, you know, more of the community members, uh, people to join, uh, join our committee and to, uh, and to keep it going. And I'm also glad, you know, that uh, my father upstairs, uh, our creator, you know, has given me more years and I, I like to, to think that I, I am, I'm putting, them to, putting some of the years in good cause, you know, to help our community and, um, and c continually addressing, you know, uh, for uh, this uh, toxic uh, and tainted waters, you know, to stop um, uh, causing uh, uh, human uh, medical problems. And... What do you think is one of the greatest accomplishments that has occurred at the Superfund site? I guess I'll do a general, you know, that also has um, helped our government, you know, to with the modern technology, you know, to to address and follow up uh, on these uh, necessary cleanups of these contaminants uh, throughout the country. Uh, you know, the modern te the technology, you know, that they've uh, the uh, engineers that are working to improve. So in general, to help uh, not just us, but the whole United States and, uh, and, and the world. And what do you want others to know about the role of the TIA Superfund site or something that might not be well known? <clears throat> I guess, uh, you know, a, a lot of the costs uh, where we're at now is the population expansion explosion, and then uh, the mighty dollar uh, that uh, a lot of people uh, don't realize uh, the uh, 
activity of uh, T, uh, TIAA and uh, its function uh, to provide services for uh, the general public. You know, our, uh, our airport, you know, our, our planes coming in and out to transport people to different parts of the country. And so uh, it's uh, a lot of folks uh, don't uh, realize, you know, the, the, uh, the good that the airport uh, provides for the general public. And do you still keep up with the contamination or updates on the contamination when it comes to the TIAA Superfund site? You know, uh, uh, back in the day, there was more, uh, not as much layman's uh, language, but uh, I, um, I try to, uh, to just uh, stay on top of, uh, of the uh, presentations that they do to us and try to comprehend and understand you know, where they're coming from, what they're covering. And uh, as you know, I guess that um, I, uh, I don't hesitate in asking heavy questions many a times, you know. And uh, uh, even um, with our co-chair, you know, I, uh, sometimes I get out of order, but I just keep on going because I, have, I believe I have a good point that needs to be uh, thrown out there, you know, especially for the new uh, uh, customers that are, the, the, the people that are participating, the new community members that are participating in our meetings, which are very, very important that now, you know, we came down to, we only have them quarterly every three months. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm always real interested, interested in uh, the new, newer ones and the younger generation, uh, like you, for example, you know, from the U of A, students that come from the U of A, to, to get aware, you know, and as little, as much information that I could, uh, I can post questions, you know, to help them comprehend and, and, uh, and continue our agents uh, on, on, on their feet. And thinking back on your experience at the Superfund site, what would you recommend or like to see future generations learn from this experience? Well, you know, like I've said it years ago, you know, that, um, the subject of environment is very, very, very broad. It's very, very large. So, uh, hey, young folks, you know, uh, get out there and, and study many of the problems that, uh, that we're causing, you know, to the environment. And uh, see what you can contribute on the, on the positive side, you know. And uh, as citizens, don't, don't just stay home, watch TV and football. Uh, get out there and be involved in, in, uh, in some of these important uh, uh, community meetings, you know, uh, pertaining to uh, our environment. And then how would you like the memory of your experience to be remembered? Uh, I guess I will use the word consistency and, uh, and thank God, you know, that I, uh, that I am 83 years old and looking forward to, uh, continue, uh, December the 7th, uh, see if I make it to 84 and that, uh, triggers down, you know, it just triggers down to not, not just, uh, the community, but you know, my, my family, I am, um, and I've said it before and now I'll say it again because, uh, my children, um, uh, they, they prepared themselves, they got married, they didn't get married young, and now we have uh, our third great-grandchild. And so am I concerned about what for them to expect when they get, when they get uh, older, you know, and, uh, and live in the community and the environment? Because uh, uh, all these things that affect us, you know, our food, our air. And uh, I wish that many years ago they would have really concentrated in getting nuclear uh, power in important things because when that thing goes out it, 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 it can create a lot of, a lot of damage and uh, so I'm very strong and I was very strong 30 40 years ago with uh, wind power and solar power and what I'm, I'm what I'm seeing now what we're seeing now and then Arizona we have plenty of sun and uh, so uh, I am real strong for uh, uh, solar power and wind power. And that would be for the next generation to kind of have these good, clean energy. Right. To, yeah, yeah. To, to wake up to that fact, you know, uh, focus on, on that, uh, the cleaning, cleaning energies that, uh, that can provide us, you know, energy to sustain our lives, to continue on forward. And how do you think that the memory of the Arizona Superfund site and the contamination will be remembered? <clears throat> 
Well, I, I think that um, I, I, I thought before, you know, I don't think it's going away soon. And so I think that uh, it's going to be around. And I hope that uh, more younger uh, through um, the curriculum that uh, was uh, is still pretty much by a community, and uh, one of the one of the, uh, the the gentlemen that had the community pretty strong on uh, uh, doing um, curriculum for Sunnyside was uh, Nacho Gomez, and uh, I supported him 100 percent on that, and um, and uh, other members that uh, are uh, some of them aren't there anymore, but uh, to continue. Um, getting the word out to our communities. And you mentioned that when you were attending the meetings, some, at first there were very technical meetings, maybe a lot of acronyms were used and a lot of scientific information. Right, right, yeah. And so what was useful for you to learn or to understand the scientific information that you were learning? Well, I, I, I guess I tried to, com uh, to connect, you know, some... Uh, Subjects with other subjects, with other other uh, words, you know, big words, <laughs> and uh, and then um, my uh, fuerte, you know, my major, you know, vocational industrial woods, industrial arts and Spanish, uh, you know, somehow a lot of this relates, but yet you know this was totally new, you know, uh, the the increments and uh, and uh, the, the the long terminology on some of the words, you know, re relating to our chemicals that were that were dropping to our aquifer. And what was not useful for you when you were learning all of this? Uh, I guess um, the time frame, you know, for me to uh, be able to to do my daily work, you know, to keep supporting my my home and uh, and then get ready to go to the meetings and stay awake. And uh, listen to, uh, you know, um, if I can use a word, you know, for uh, some people, I don't like to really use it, but uh, uh, some of the uh, agencies were they really feeding us uh, exactly the, the right scoop, you know, or, or some garbage. Sorry. And, to, and so you have to uh, keep your eyes uh, and your ears open to uh, all the presentations from the different agencies. And were you surprised if any of the information that you learned was anything surprising to you? You know, I, I hate to I hate to go back to that. You know that uh, I many times don't believe I, I don't believe it a hundred percent. In in one of uh, going back, uh, Denise, to uh, one of my satisfactions also uh, in membership. You know, I've seen more community uh, joining our group now. But I, I I'd like to throw a name out there, a couple of names. You know of uh, of. Uh, of uh, people working with the water department, David Barraza. I like to be uh, happy that I was there working with David Barraza, and then uh, Biggs also now that he's there. Uh, uh, Molina, I think, is doing a good job. So that also motivates me and uh, makes me happy. You know that uh, that we are. I want to think that we're working together. All right, Henry. So. My next question that I have is, did you attend any community meetings that talked about health studies? I, I, I've attended so many meetings, but I can't, I can't give you a straight answer right now. Okay, not a problem. But I'm sure I have several. And then in your opinion, what is the importance of this site here in Arizona? The, like at the Arizona level, at a national level? <clears throat> well, you know, how can you uh, gauge, you know, when we are supposed to be the third largest super site in the United States, other than one in California? So it is uh, of high priority. It's, it's way out there. And what advice do you have for state and federal governments that oversee the cleanup? For them not to let us down, we are paying our mighty dollar in Texas, all of us folks. And uh, we 
would like to keep our country strong and we need to have them uh, be right there with us in responding, you know, to the responsibilities, you know, that uh, to provide the communities good health, primarily good health. Otherwise, what do we do? We all die. Uh, we all go to the job and we, we don't do the right job because something is affecting us. So, yes, they might, they must continue to do their job as good as I've done my job and not, uh, not, not be diddly diddly at any level. And what education or com communication rec recommendations do you have for the new generation that is active at the community level? Besides uh, their studies and uh, their obligations and the ones that uh, might have a uh, job, two jobs and, and also go into studies to continue, to continue as best as they can as citizens of uh, one of the best and most uh, blessed country in the world. Did your experience at the Superfund site change your thinking about the sources of chemicals in your community or that you use even at your house? Absolutely. I, uh, <clears throat> every chemical, including uh, even uh, to, for the roaches, what's the name of that one? Uh, that we use around the house, any chemicals that are used, uh, that we can use at home, we have to be very cautious with them. Read the instructions on them and be cautious with them. And what additional information would you like to have or have had in regards about the site? I guess, in other words, uh, for example, is there some information that you've just like always wondered or you've never gotten enough or an answer on a question that you've had? Well, I, I think that, uh, you, you know, the, um, the agent, agencies that come, uh, there's been times that they, they run out of answers, but I would like to think, you know, of uh, what we get is 100%. But I still don't believe we do. Sorry. And is there anything else that you'd like to comment on the Superfund site, your involvement with the community and the contamination, or anything that you might have left out? <clears throat> I hope that this uh, Superfund site, you know, and the remediation program uh, has really. Uh, uh, told us the truth, you know, uh, that there is uh, nothing else down there that we're going to be contenting with. Uh, I don't want to get into Dean Apple because it's a subject that uh, if we have an earthquake, then we would, we would be getting more TC or other contaminants that are maybe laying in those pockets, you know, to then contribute attribute to the our, our aquifer. And uh, there's a lot of... Um, we can't, uh, I don't think that we have a radar, uh, a good uh, x-ray that we can see the whole stratosphere below us to our aquifer. And I hope that uh, our government continues, uh, the, the EPA uh, re responsibles, uh, that uh, they continue to stay on top of the subject. Okay, Henry, can you show me one of your first photographs that you have? All right, thank you. And can you describe that photograph to me? Or what does that represent? I think it represents uh, my involvement, you know, in the 90s at the clinic, you know, with the uh, TC program. Uh, it was the second anniversary. So that was, you know, my, uh, my involvement there already from the 90s, uh, again, after I lost my sister, my sister Charlotte. And can you show the second photograph? <clears throat> the second photograph, uh, I'm glad to uh, re remind myself that uh, then there was from Ward 5, Steve Leal. He was uh, one of the um, mayor and council. He was one of the council persons there, Steve Leal. And uh, uh, which reminds me 
overall in all my years of involvement, particularly with the UCAP meetings, that uh, the Board of Supervisors, Pima County Board of Supervisors, or the mayor and council, they sent uh, a representative very few times to our meetings. And uh, that was to me kind of degrading because a uh, very important meeting. If we're the third largest super site, you know, and uh, following up the remediation program.